yourself from the top of your head. Go down to the description box right now to hear more Malcolm, Les Martin, my man Rez featuring Conway the Machine in its entirety in the description box right now exclusively on iTunes. Don't wait. Hit the button right now. Let's go. Thank you very much. And look forward to talking to y'all soon, man. Yes, sir. But you tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother Oh God and Sam. Man, we going in today. On this Monday, no matter where you're listening to it or watching, all I ask you to do, if you can, go ahead and just share this video. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the like button. You know what I mean? Share it with one other person. We do appreciate that. You know, um, right now, I want to talk about this, Sam, man, right now, man, because this is crazy, son. Michael Avnati. Yeah. And when we was talking about this, um, we first broke the story. There were like these videotapes pretty much came out that R. Kelly was allegedly with some underage, you know, um, um, women. Now, everybody... A lot of people put my comment section. They started telling me about the lawyer then, but I kind of just didn't think about it. But these new allegations have came out, and pretty much Michael Avnati has been arrested, arrested and charged with trying to extort twenty million dollars out of Nike. Now, this story broke earlier via TMZ, and the feds claim that Avnati had told Nike lawyers that if they didn't pay him between fifteen and twenty-five million, that he will hold a news conference on the eve of Nike's quarterly earnings call. And the start of March Madness to announce allegations of misconduct by employees at the shoe company. Now, according to the complaint, they're saying Avnati demanded that Nike hire him to conduct an internal investigation for an enormous salary. Now, prosecutors say that um, Avnati gave Nike an option. Don't hire him, but pay $22.5 million to resolve the dispute. Now, also, it further goes on to say that... uh, Avnadi claimed that AAU coach had evidence that one or more of Nike employees had funded payments to families of top high school basketball players and attempted to conceal those payments. Now, this is just one part, you know, of this. He has been arrested, you know, I mean, pretty much trying to extort them and pretty much trying to lie and say they had information that they, you know, um, were trying to um, do some illegal stuff behind the scenes. The feds were on them. They got wiretaps. They got him saying, you know, that he even had Nike by the balls. Sam, man, all this being said, right? What is what? What do you think? How do you think this affects the R. Kelly case? The lawyer that had the sex tapes against R. Kelly being arrested for trying to extort Nike. I can't make this stuff up, people. Well, if I break it down in two parts, as far as Avnadi's concerned, he may be done. It seemed like anytime you read another sentence or another line. In regards to Michael Avnati, it was like, damn, he's done. He's done. He's done. There's more. It just got worse and worse and worse. (laughs) So then the immediate thought in my mind was, damn, well, the tapes, that was the biggest thing in this whole R. Kelly situation. Now, we know we've seen the documentary or the docuseries, whatever the fuck you want to call it, Surviving R. Kelly. And we heard those women's testimonies and disgusting and gruesome. Although they were very disgusting and gruesome, it wasn't as much as, as gray area as it is to sit here and put the man on trial, especially when we're talking about grown women, that being 18 years of age or older. When you're talking about underage girls, 14 being babies and him doing things disgusting and that being on tape. Oh, well, we got a whole different discussion right now. They may have something. And now it's coming out that the lawyer may be a shysty piece of shit, uh, finesse embezzler. Right. And none of that stuff may be submissible in court because mm-hmm. the defense could eat that up. This, Tape could be fake. Look at this dude's credibility. Yeah. Look at this dude's this. Look at this dude's that. And it could be a situation where potentially, dare I say, we don't ever see the tapes. Not that I need to see the tape, but it ever gets presented in court and he walks. Well, another thing that they say about Avnadi, I got I gotta just, you know, add this to it. It says Avnadi was arrested for more federal crimes, bank and wire fraud, you know, pretty much what he said that um he also lied um about you know um tax returns saying that he um made more money that he made and they found out that that was a lie so he has a whole looks like a whole rap sheet right now against him now what we don't know about the tape is that the tape obviously already is in the hands of the prosecution so they're moving forward you know still with the investigation but the last time we heard i think r kelly's he wanted to look at the tape so we haven't seen the tapes you know um (sighs) He, I, I don't get scared like he's going to lose the case because of the tape because he won before. But this is this is a black eye, man. I mean, this is definitely a black eye on this case. Looking at Avnadi, supposed to be kind of the uh, the hero here, the savior here, to kind of come up with these tapes. And he's you know who's saying that he was the reason pretty much why you know um, that they uh, brought up charges against R. Kelly. You know, what I mean, for him to be caught up 
like this can definitely be a credibility issue. Don't think that it will totally derail R. Kelly if if he was actually on those tapes doing what he said. But mm. the, the you know the question is there though. Definitely. I don't know, I, that, and that's my question: Will they ever be even be seen in court? And it doesn't his mm -hmm. have not even been put up with these charges. Never, it doesn't put a question in my mind on whether or not R. Kelly is guilty or not. None of us were there. None of us know. Only certain people in that certain mm -hmm. situation really know the truth. All we could do is give our opinion. So it doesn't change my perspective in that. But what it does do is really tarnish his credibility. And someone in a, in a court case is going to eat that up and they're really going to fight for those tapes. In my humble opinion, because I don't get in the law, none of that shit. Mm -hmm. They're going to fight for those tapes never to even be seen. And if a jury never sees them, it never happened. Yeah, yeah. And that's you what know, I mean. In the court of law, it never happened. Yeah, you know, we'll see. It would be nice if we had, you know, attorney Shabazz on it, you know, give us the uh, particulars, Word. you know, of that. But, you know, we will see. It's definitely not a good look. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a good look for R. Kelly, obviously. But um, you couldn't have wrote anything different than that this is crazy well you see him trying to go to dubai and dubai said hell no he was oh, in yeah. a he was in a hearing where he tried to go travel to go make some money and dubai was like nah they ain't having it right so do you see him i mean do you see this being a ripple effect dubai is very strict and we all know their rules and regulations yeah, out strict. there yeah. do you see this happening i on think a global, so on a global scale i think a lot of countries will some won't you know what i mean the more strict the companies you know um even though i don't think you know um unless he was convicted you know what i mean it's not fair but Countries you can do what the hell they want to do. And like you said, Dubai is one of the most, from what we hear, the most strict, strictest countries you yeah. know, ever. You can't have different, you know, uh, things on your record and whatnot. So, yeah, people may follow suit. But um, definitely didn't expect this, you know, coming out today, Michael Avnada being charged and arrested for trying to extort Nike, you know, out of millions, you know, of dollars. Definitely going to hurt the case against R. Kelly. Um, A lot of people were saying from the beginning, they thought that R. Kelly may walk anyway, even with the videotape that is, that is you know, was laughing. That was always your it. suspicion underneath. I never yeah. thought that, and I thought that he may have been even a lot more nervous than what it seemed given, and then we seen the erratic interview that he yeah. threw out and everything. So he was nervous, and I think that he still is nervous, but, I mean, you did say it. You said it early on that you you may see this as another situation where R. R Kelly potentially walks because where's the substantial evidence in this? Mm -hmm. And I mean, we'll see. Let's see because they said he had the DNA. So let's see how how credible that was. Let's see if the tapes actually go in. If they take that into consideration, mm -hmm. um, those are the two major things right there. You know, somehow the tapes don't go in. They never see the tapes or whatever. And the DNA wasn't like they said. He may walk again, but I doubt it. Right. Yeah, I doubt it, too. Like, <laughs> I think he's going to definitely do something. Well, like I said, whether if they got him again, they're not going to let him walk again. Based off of all of this, in my personal opinion, I right. just don't see him lightning striking twice and him getting off whether he's innocent or not. Right. I feel like once he sets foot in his foot in that courtroom, that's his ass and he knows it. Word. We'll yeah. see. Definitely. But yeah, man, tuned into the Uncensored Truth podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. Man, man, we going in today on this Monday. Everybody that's listening to this podcast on YouTube, as always, go ahead and hit the like button and make sure you share this video in your Facebook timeline or at least with one other person. I'm going to jump over here to this story, man. It's been a kind of, you know, a while since this, you know, song, you know, popped off. But um, I wanted to kind of talk about this before. Jacquez sat down, you know, with a radio station. I think it's Big Boy's Neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and he talked about the LMA Trip remix and DJ Mustard. I'm going to play that clip, and then we're going to rap about this, Sam, man. Let's do it. Here we go. Now, Cleese, why were you asked to take down Trip? Remix. Really, DJ Mustard hated on me. I really know. You know what I'm saying? No cap. That was crazy. Shout out to YG. YG, my partner. And I want to work with DJ Mustard, too, but that was a hate move because it was crazy because it was going, too, huh? Yeah, and I thought it was just dope, you know, because I've been making remix for for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, in LMA, we had just became friends. You know what I'm saying? We had just became friends. I had just met her backstage at the CD concert. We had another show together. She was supposed to come to my after party. We were just linking up, you know what I'm saying? And um, I did Trip. I DM LMA online. I was going to redo Trip. I'm like, this hard. And I dropped Trip. And LMA commented on it. She put all the fire on it. Like, it's hard. Like, she didn't say this hard, but she just put all the fire on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. You feel me? So, we like, now we going up. You feel me? But see, I shot a video for it, and the director put it on his uh, YouTube page or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I guess. All right, so that's.